Woods. Brother Woods, read that. Hebrew chapter 8, verse 8. Uh -huh. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day is come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant uh -huh. with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Right, read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continue not in my covenant, uh -huh. and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Read. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put the laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So right now, we still actually keep the laws, statutes, and commandments as written in the Old Testament, but under the faith of Christ. Christ did that new covenant, because under the old covenant, buying and selling on the Sabbath day, you they got put to death. But because Christ died, you are now able to be justified of that sin. But that don't mean that you got to keep sinning. You got to keep the commandments. Give me uh, Revelation 22. Revelation 22, 14. There's a book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Uh -huh. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. So if you want everlasting life, you got to keep the commandments. That's why it says, blessed are they that keep the commandments, that they have right to the tree of life. Because if you don't keep the commandments, you don't have right to the tree of life. Give me Romans 8. Romans 13 and 8. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you. Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. Romans is after the death of Christ. This is Paul speaking. Read that. Romans chapter 13 verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. Uh -huh. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Read. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. So we should not commit adultery. That's in the old covenant. Read. Thou shalt not kill. That's in the old covenant. Thou shalt not steal. That's in the old covenant. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's in the old covenant. Thou shalt not covet. Uh huh. And if there be any other law, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So right there, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Where do you find that at? Give me Leviticus 19. That's also in the Old Covenant. Yeah. So what I'm showing you is even after the death of Christ, we still got to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments found in the Old Testament. Why? Because Christ said he came in the volume of the book. So read Leviticus 19. I'm going to show you something. Leviticus, what he just quoted. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Read it again and read it right. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So the word rebuke means to correct. So we got to correct our neighbor. Now earlier you said you was good. You was plugged in. That's what you said, right? Numbers 15, 38. Let's see if you plugged in. Because this is right here. is love. This is how we're going to help you. This is love. This is how we're going to help you. Number, Number chapter 15, 15 verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes. You know what? Stop. Hold that. We're going to come back to that. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going to see if we plugged in right now for show for show. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Uh -huh. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ, read. And the head of the woman is the man. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. So we show in the divine order, but watch this, read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. So it says every man praying or prophesying. When the Bible's coming out, this is the spirit of prophecy. So you're in the midst of the spirit of prophecy right now. So praying or prophesying, if you have your head covered, you dishonor your head. So who is your head again? Christ. So if you have your head covered, you dishonor in Christ, right? When the Bible's coming out. So what should you do right now if you're plugged in? What should you do right now if you're plugged in, like you say? Every man praying, Every or, prophesying. Man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Yeah, you got your head on your head, so what you supposed to do? But you're in the spirit of prophecy. Give me that. Rome, Revelation 19. I'm going to show you something, Brother Woods. There's the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Uh -huh. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, 
For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So is the Bible the testimony of Jesus? I mean, we're reading the Bible right now, right? And you're listening, right? So is that the spirit of prophecy? So when you go back to 1 Corinthians 11, it says praying or prophesying, right? If you're in the spirit of prophecy, you're still in the spirit of prophecy. Whether you're doing it or you're listening to somebody. So you should uncover your head right now. That's what we're showing you. So what you going to do? So my brother, that's a sign of repentance. show you something. We're going to go there. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Hey, hey, do your head off. Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices. With those sacrifices. What, what was the old covenant? The old covenant was animal sacrifice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the, with the killing of those animals, they couldn't they couldn't bring... Read it, read it. What, what? Read it. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. So it was animal sacrifice that was the schoolmaster. It wasn't all of the law. Jump, jump, jump down to verse 8. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 8 uh -huh. above when he said sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not neither has pleasure therein which are offered by the law verse 9 then said he lo I come to do thy will O God uh -huh. he taketh away the first that he may establish the second we, by which we were sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. So we've been sanctified, meaning we can come back, we can repent through the offering of Jesus Christ as the ultimate sacrifice. So the law that he did away with was the law of sacrifice. Matthew 5, 17. Matthew 5, 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Listen up, Brother Woods. Thank not that I am come to destroy the law. All the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Jesus Christ said he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. What did he fulfill? Acts 3, 18. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. We're going to see what he came to fulfill. Brother Woods, read. In the book of Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. So Christ coming and dying on the cross, him becoming that sacrifice, that's what he fulfilled. But we're going to go back to Matthew 5. Right, so we're going to go back to Matthew 5 and watch this. Verse 18, For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So it said until heaven and earth pass. If you look up in the sky, that's heaven, right? And we're still on the earth, right? So the earth, the heaven and the earth ain't going nowhere. So guess what? He said, not one jot, so not one comma or one period from the law shall be shall, shall be destroyed. So that means you gotta keep the law. That means you still gotta keep the law. Say, come, I, I, I ain't I ain't quite here. Say that again. Go through light without sin. So, I'm going to show you what Christ said. Go to, go to, go to first Peter. Uh -huh. But I'm going to show you. Matter of fact, go, go, Matthew, go to Matthew 5, 48 first. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So it says, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What is perfect? So it says be perfect. The earth, being perfect is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Psalm 19. It's the book of Psalm, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So it says the law is perfect, converting the soul. 
converting means to change or to repent, right? So the laws is what's going to make that conversion happen, that repentance happen. That's Once right. you learn that you're not supposed to shave your beard and you start growing your beard out, that's repentance. When you when you learn you got to take your hat off when the word is coming out, that's repentance. When you learn you got to wear rings on your clothes. I'm going to go get my set. I'm going to get my own set. Yeah, all praises to the Most High. That's what you need to do. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you something. Romans 3. Romans 3 and 3. I'm going to show you. This is what we're going to do. I see that? I sound like I can jump that call here. You probably got all this in the dark. You ought to get nothing from nobody to know what. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 3. Verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. So it says, let God be true and every man a liar. How do we let God be true? By going to his word. Give me John 5 and 39. This is what you're supposed to do, and this is what we want you to do. Don't believe me. Don't believe me. Just make sure what I said is about this Bible. Right, right, that's right. That's what it's the book of John, chapter 5. 39. 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. That's your job, eternal. is to go search the scriptures. Make sure what we say and line up with what the Bible say. And I'm going to show you something else. Give me Revelation 14 and 12. Because it, it's two things we got to have. we got to have the faith in Christ, but it's something else. That we, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Uh -huh. Here is the patient of the saints. Uh -huh. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And the faith of Jesus. See that? It's two things. They say keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Because through Jesus Christ is how you're able to be redeemed from the things we couldn't be redeemed from under the law of Moses, under animal sacrifice. Because guess what? Under animal sacrifice, blood had to spill, right? Yeah. So if you broke the Sabbath day, there was no animal that you could put to death for your sin. You had to die for breaking the Sabbath day. If you're the homosexual, you had to die for being a homosexual. If you was called adultery, you had to die for being an adultery. But under Jesus Christ, under the death of Christ, you're able to repent. I gotta go. He's throwing me. They told me to adultery, right? Or the law, like right? Can you do it today? You can go out there and do it today, but guess what? There's a judgment. Deuteronomy 28, 61. I'm gonna show you the judgment for that adultery that we go commit adultery. Deuteronomy 28, 61. Come on, let's go. Am I allowed to stone him? No, you're not allowed to stone him because it says thou shalt not kill. That's why Jesus Christ had to die on the cross. So you're able to be justified of that now if you repent. But guess what? If you don't repent, there's a judgment for it. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 61. Uh -huh. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. There's sickness written in the Bible. No, it's not. It's gonorrhea written in the Bible. No, it's not. It's monkeypox written in the Bible. No, it's not. It's HIV written in the Bible. No, it's not. All those are sexually transmitted diseases that you can get put upon you for committing adultery. And guess what the result of all those diseases are? Death. So you can get put to death for committing adultery by getting these diseases and these plagues. But guess what? You have the ability to repent under what Jesus like Christ. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 